What's going on guys? Zuko back with another Dragonflight video. Listen, I'm so excited about this video. We are going to talk today about Enhancement Shaman and I'm going to do a tier list for you on all the builds that are possible for Enhancement Shaman that are kind of viable. I've spent the last like day going through all of them. I have a whole bunch of stuff to show you guys, okay? So let me just show you. I'll get to this ranking factors thing in a second. This is a picture that I made up, and I have a picture for each one of the builds that I've done. Okay, see all the pictures there? There's a whole bunch of different ones. We'll get to this in a minute. Each picture is going to show you what the build is capable of doing, and it will also show you the talent tree that is associated with the build, okay? I'm going to put all of these pictures up on my Discord, okay? So you, you'll be able to just go to the Discord, and you'll be able to see what was the build that he... Okay, this is the Alpha Wolf build. This is the Raging Fire build. This is whatever, and you can just look at it and go, okay... This is what the build is capable of doing. Boom, boom, boom. And this is the talent tree that I need to do in order to use the build. So I'm trying to make it really simple uh, for all you guys. So you can just have a, a one-click stop shop to get to. So we'll talk about this in a second. At the end of the video, I'm going to rate them all. I've got all the all the pictures here. I know this is really janky and looks stupid, but it'll make more sense later. Okay, it'll make more sense later, I promise. For now, we're going to talk about... Just the risk factors. Let's move. Okay. So let's just talk about the risk factors, the ranking factors. So let me start out just by saying I'm going to test five builds today. And I'm going to test them all first. And then I'm going to rank them at the end. Okay. Here's the ranking factors. This is what you, you want. This is important stuff. So number one, we're looking at our uh, damage profile and we're talking basically single target slash AOE so that is a really important how much damage do these suckers actually do okay really important to understand that okay damage profile number one uh, uh, you know a lot of my other videos I talk about I don't I try not to talk about damage as much but in this one I do want to talk about damage because if this is the build you're gonna run for like season one and maybe beyond you need to know how much damage it does okay number two is of execution how easy is it to actually perform the build one criticism for enhancement shaman is that oftentimes all of your buttons are glowing all the all at once and you're not really sure what to do so it's important to know how easy is it to execute this build number three we've got resource generation early in an expansion when our when our secondary stats are low particularly haste it can be very difficult to generate resources so which are these builds giving us talents that help us generate resources more easily? If so, that's what we're looking at there. And finally, we want to talk about fun. I do want the builds to be fun. That is always something I'm, that's really important. If you're not having fun paying $15 a month to play a video game, why the hell are you here? Okay. So these are our ranking factors for the different builds. That's what we're going with. And I'll show you pictures of them in a minute. Let me, um, let me just... Make another couple of uh, uh, mentions here real quick. So, um, number one, I am going to be testing these builds on my current character, which is in uh, the beta. Let me get rid of these. So, I'm on the beta, and here's my item level, okay? So, it's just important to understand this stuff really quickly. I'm at 373 item level. That's not very high. OK, I want I want you to understand when these builds are going to be achievable. So basically you have to hit max level 70, of course, and then these builds are basically achievable. But the damage numbers that you're going to see today is coming from a item level 373 character with a season one tier set bonus on. But my weapons aren't very good. I don't have any special trinkets. My rings are just kind of whatever. My overall item level is 373 in Dragonflight. Mythic plus two will start dropping item level 376 gear, higher than my current item level total right now. Now, these tier set bonuses I have are 389 because they come from normal raid. So these are all normal raid pieces, 389. So you can, if you're in the first week of season one of Dragonflight, okay, which is on December 12th, First week of season one, you can start getting gear that is actually higher item level than what I'm wearing. So my point, my point to say all this, it, my point is to say this: the gear that I'm wearing in this demonstration, the damage I'm going to be doing is is based on a character that is in the early stages of season one. You're in the early stages of Dragonflight season one. That's where we're at right here. This is what my gear is representing. 
you're not even really into the mid stage. If you were into the middle stage of season one, you'd be doing like mythic plus eight, mythic plus nine, mythic plus 10. Like that's where you would be at and you'd be doing heroic rating. All of that stuff is above the item level that I'm currently on right now. So if you're getting to normal rating and like mythic plus four, plus, plus two to four, you're like in the perfect range for the gear that I have on right now. So you can accomplish this build very quickly. I just wanna make sure we make that clear, okay? I have um, no enchants, no trinkets, no sockets, no files, no food buffs, okay? And I'm hitting the same dummies on every test. It's going to be these four dummies. I might occasionally work in a fifth dummy, but generally speaking, it's going to be these four dummies right in front of me, okay? That is what we are doing. Okay, the final note is that I have all of the builds right here. Let me move this over here. I have all the builds down here on my list. It's really, really cool. I've got Alpha Wolf... Primordial Winds, Raging Fire, the Trinity, and Thorum's Wave. These are the five different builds that I'm going to be running. And I'm primarily going to be showing you how the um, specs, how the spec side of the tree is going to change. We're literally not paying attention to the uh, class side at all. I'm just looking at the spec side. Okay? Okay, okay, okay. All the questions cleared up. Everybody good? Okay. Let me show you the first picture for the first build that I want to do, which is in fact called Primordial Winds wins so let me bring that up on the other side here prime module wins okay so we're going to bounce back and forth here a little bit here we go video okay uh get that up there okay so i do have my notes right there that's we're gonna those are done now right i don't need those anymore yep those are done okay remember the rankings here we go so what does Primordial Winds do? We can see the talent tree is set up so it has a, a, a couple points into Lavalash. And then real, really what we're doing is we're going hard left into Doom Winds. And we're picking up the physical damage components in the bottom with the Witch Doctor Wolf Bones. Alpha Wolf, Legacy of the Frost Witch, which combines with Doom Winds for big, big, big bursts of damage when you do Primordial Wave. So we want the Primordial Wave Haste Window. Very important, and we're going to combine that with physical damage, okay? So that's why this is called the Primordial Winds, because it's like you're taking the big haste window from your Primordial Wave buff, and you're turning it into physical damage with Doom Winds and uh, with Alpha Wolf from your dogs and with Storm Strike. Your primary button in this build is Storm Strike, okay? It has consistent resource generation because of Legacy, so Legacy is really, really good because it resets your Storm Strike for you. That's a free proc on Stormbringer, essentially, right? And um, the... Where's this button over here? Why do I have this here? Uh, let me... I'll, I'll, I'll change this in one second. Uh, the obviously Wish Dr. Wolf Bones is giving you the resource generation as well because the longer your wolves are up, the more Maelstrom weapon stacks you are generating. And it's a very smooth rotation. It's very simple. This is the simple build that goes Crash Lightning, Storm Strike, Chain Lightning, Crash Lightning, Storm Strike. You just go between the three. Okay? So let's go back to the game. I don't know what that... I had the wrong I had the wrong like uh, icon there. That's my bad there. So let's get this back up again. And let's get right into it. I'm going to show you a gameplay demonstration. And we have it up right here. Boom, this is it. Oh, I did. I put one point to Elemental Assault. That was it. You can kind of... You can, you can go between these two. You can either do... Two into Legacy or one into Elemental, one into Legacy. Let's just do two into Legacy just to show you exactly how, how it was on the uh, on the screen there. Okay, Really, that's interchangeable, though. And there's a lot of that in these different builds. There'll be different things that are interchangeable. Here's the gameplay demonstration for Primordial Winds. Okay, So it's very similar with most of these builds. You're going to start with your Feral Spirits. And then um, we're going to do... Primordial Wave, spread it around, get a big, big haste window, and then go into Doom Winds. Okay, here we go. Watch my damage meter on the right hand, on the left-hand side there. Make sure this is current segment. Let's just reload just to make sure it's good to go. And then we're going to do this build. I'm only going to do it for like a minute, okay? Here we go. Wolves, Crash Lightning, Prime Wave, spread it around. Big Lightning Bolt, and we go. Look at our damage. Look at our damage. Really, really high. Our wolves are back already. We have four wolves out right now. This build absolutely slaps. It's really, really crazy. In particular, it's because of the Primordial Wave window. That's why it's called Primordial Winds. Again, you're taking that Primordial Wave window and you're turning it into physical damage with Doom Winds and Storm Strike procs. 
You're hoping to get as many Stormbringer procs as possible. If you don't get a Stormbringer proc, you can always get the cooldown of Stormstrike back with Legacy of the Frost Witch. Doing tons of work there. Okay. Our Primordial Wave window is coming. I'm going to throw it over here. Now we'll get five Lightning Bolts. Boom. Big, big, big damage. Go, 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 go. Big haste window. Big haste window. Boom. Awesome damage right there. Okay? That is how the build works right there. We're going to settle around 93 damage here. 93k, sorry. That's only on basically four or five targets. I only picked up five targets at the end. And realistically, I wasn't hitting five targets. So what does this build do? Physical damage and lightning damage, of course. Primordial. So the Primordial Wave gives us that huge lightning bolt cleave. That's why this is so high. Wind Fury Attack and Spirit Bomb. That is the Alpha Wolf talent that we've taken down here. That's what's doing that damage right there. So... That's how the damage works out, that's how the build looks, and that's how it feels. And I'm telling you, this build has enormous burst windows when you combine the Primordial Wave Haste buff down here with Splintered Elements with Doom Winds. It is outrageous. And because you're going so fast, your dogs are attacking faster as well, and uh, your Chain Lightning Crash Lightning causes all your wolves to attack all nearby enemies, you can increase the attack speed of your dogs with the Splintered Elements. That's why everything is so fast. Okay? That's build number one. Physical Primordial Wave put together. That's what you get the Primordial Winds build right there. Okay. Let's switch over to build number two. I'm going to do it right here. I want to do Raging Fire. I'll switch right here. And then I'll get my picture up here on the other side. Okay, let's do a little switcheroo here. Build number two, Raging Fire. Uncapped AoE damage, okay? Um, uncapped AoE fire damage with Fire Nova. Consistent damage profile and strong single target damage. This is a very different looking build. So what does this do? The damage profile, if we're looking at this list over here, it has single target and AoE. So it's uncapped AoE and really good single target with Elemental Blast, Primordial Wave, and essentially the old Primal Lava Actuators, It's uh, but you combine it with Hot Hands now. It's called Ashen Catalyst is what it's called. Ease of Execution, this build, you just press Lava Lash for the most part. That's almost all you're doing. Tab target, Lava Lash, tab target, Lava Lash, et cetera, et cetera. Some people, like uh, Rose in the chat there, hates tab targeting with Lava Lash, but that is what you do with this build. Resource Generation, it's a little bit lower than the Storm Strike builds because Lava Lash doesn't generate a ton of Maelstrom Weapon Stacks on its own, and you don't have other buffs that are giving you Maelstrom Weapon Stack Generation. So that is the one thing about this build. Resource Generation is a little bit lower, but it's not, it's not horrific. It's not really... It's not totally horrible here's the talent tree on the side you can see it. i should point over there i guess talent tree is over over there anyway i'm gonna do it back in game let's go back to game okay let's get the webcam back on now um i've already got the talents loaded in here this is how we get resource generation with swirling maelstrom this is our uncapped aoe with fire nova let's get back to it and see how it plays out okay now we are of course taking elemental dogs this time we still have the big Primordial Wave haste window. I'm not going to be using Ellie Blast in this test because I want to show AoE damage. But if I was on a single target, then I would be showing off Elemental Blast. But I'm not going to in this test. Just just understand understand that, okay? Um, you can actually switch weapons right now and get double Flame Tongue on your weapons. I actually don't think it matters whatsoever. Your Flame Tongue damage doesn't go up by that much. But I'll just do it for the purposes of this test. So here's how this build is going to look. Still going to start with dogs, still going to do Primordia Wave, and you're still going to spread it around, and then you're going to detonate it with Fire Nova. Dogs, I'm going to crash once, Primordia Wave, spread it around, Lightning Bolt, and detonate. Then we go. We got a hot hand proc right now. So I'm tab targeting through to get the hot hand procs going. You can see the damage there. Maybe not as big as the other uh, build was, but it's very, uh, verse it's very consistent damage. Okay. Fire Nova. Okay. Keep tab targeting. Okay. There we go. Keep tab targeting. Oh, I'm messing up there. It's a little bit slower. Once we get our haste window back from Primordial Wave, though, it's going to be really good. So we'll go Wolves right now into Primordial Wave on the fifth target. Big Lightning Bolt. And boom, here we go. Tab targeting through still. Wolves are back. 
Got lots of fire wolves. Our damage spiked right there really hard in that window. That was pretty cool. Big, big damage spike for us there. Okay. Fire stuff's coming back, and you can see this is kind of how the build works, okay? I'm going to jump off the dummies right now. We'll get one more. There we go. So that's, again, about one minute of time there, and it's good. The, the damage is going to settle, but it was actually very, very close to the other build. We can look, actually, if we go back one. 86k overall in the last one, and then we've got about 82k on this one. You know, if I'd done it correctly, it would have been fine. But one thing that's really, really cool about this build is that the, you get that consistent damage profile because of the, what happens with your talents. So see how the damage profile has changed. Of course, we have Flame Shock, Lava Lash damage. Why is that so high? Because we're getting Hot Hand and we're tab targeting with Lashing Flames. It makes your Flame Shocks do double damage. So the reason this build is so smooth to play is because of Ashen Catalyst, old school PLA, okay? All your Flame Shocks are reducing the cooldown of your Lava Lash. So it just keeps coming back over and over again. And actually, the UI was bugging out there. It, it wasn't really showing it properly. But because Lava Lash comes back so often, it means you're never worried about what buttons you're going to press. Sometimes with the Storm Strike builds, you don't get a reset on Storm Strike like you want to. And you're waiting around for one to two seconds for Storm Strike to come back. With this build, you're basically never waiting for a button to come back because all your flame shocks are reducing the cooldown on Lava Lash, which is really, really good. I didn't get to show off the strong single target damage on this build, but it would be a combination of Hot Hand procs and Elemental Blast. Just understand that. You get two charges of Elemental Blast if you take Lava Burst and Elemental Blast, and I think that it's a very, very strong contender for that reason. If you're in a Mythic Plus environment uh, and, you're, and you're hitting bosses, or if you're doing a raid, this would be a pretty good uh, build for raid minus Fire Nova. Okay? So you can see Fire Nova doing 12%, Flame Shock, Lava Lash, and then Chain Lightning's up there as well. A lot of our damage has changed. Very, very cool. I like this build a lot. Okay? Let's move forward. Build number three. Let me switch to it right now. We're going to switch to... We've done Primordial Winds, Raging Fire. We will do Alpha Wolf is the next one. Get my picture up here. Okay, and we'll switch over here. I'm going to introduce it really quickly. Bum, 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 bum. So this one, we're gonna we're talking about um, getting DRE with Legacy of the Frost Witch, and it's got the Thorums line. So of course, this is called the Alpha Wolf, but it, it is a Thorums invocation plus potentially Alpha Wolf, or as you can see in this talent tree, you just don't take anything in the bottom here you skip alpha wolf and you take the buffs to storm strike instead which will subsequently buff wind uh wind strike when it procs so this has really efficient burst windows it has big burst windows but they're also very efficient because when you're in thorums of course it's casting chain lightning for free so it's very very efficient the damage profile there is very good on aoe very very good on aoe it's a little bit lower on single target because we don't have Elemental Blast and we don't have Hot Hand, which really are the two best single target buffs that we could possibly have. The ease of execution is literally so easy on this build. You press Storm Strike. Do everything you can to press Storm Strike. It will turn into Wind Strike. You press Wind Strike as well. Okay, You're going to have to keep up your Flame Shocks a little bit, but it's besides that, it's mostly just Storm Strike, Wind Strike. Okay? Resource generation. This generates a ton of resources. Absolute ton of resources, and it's very fun to play. The only maybe weakness here would be that it has low single target damage, I would say. A little bit lower than maybe some of the other builds that have Hot Hand and Elemental Blast in them. Okay, We don't really benefit from Elemental Blast as much because we're not running um, anything. We're not running like Elemental Spirits. Um, we could still run LA Blast, though, if you wanted to try it. So here's what I'm going to do for this build in-game. I am going to run it with Alpha Wolf just for this test because we're on an AoE test. But if you were doing, like, a raid boss, you might want to spec out of Alpha Wolf and you would take Elemental Assault instead. That's the idea you could do. Or you could take Elemental Blast for single target damage. You could also take that just to get the extra oomph on Elemental Damage. It has that flexibility. For this test, though, we are going to show with just the Alpha Wolf because it is called the Alpha Wolf, which is, you know, I figured we should just leave it like that. But here's what you're doing. You're hoping to get a DRE proc, and it's going to spend all your resources for you. And you're going to combine that with a Doom Winds window to have huge physical burst damage in a window. Let me just reload everything here so that we can do this properly. 
Okay, we're gonna get we have both of our enchants back, Wind Fury and Flame Tongue, and we have Wind Fury Totem back. We don't have Primordial Wave. Okay? That is the one thing we're sort of missing now. So we're gonna start with our dogs, and we're gonna do the same rotation we had before. Crash lightning into Doom Winds into Sundering. We're gonna try and proc Storm Strike. We're actually gonna press Storm Strike first, sorry, because we wanna try and proc our DRE as much as we can. Okay, here we go. Let's go Wolves into Crash, into Storm Strike, into Doom Winds. Okay. We'll do Sundering. Okay, we press Storm Strike as much as possible. We are gonna do this until we get a proc on DRE. Oh, there we go. Of course, every time I say it, it goes off. Boom. Just press Storm, press Wind Strike. Okay, Wolves, wolves again. Storm Strike. There's a legacy proc. We get our storm strike back. Okay, another legacy proc. We're gonna get storm strike back. Keep pressing it. I didn't even put my flame shocks out yet because I'm an idiot. Forgot about that. But really, you do just want to focus on pressing storm strike. That is the big deal here. Okay, storm strike, storm strike, storm strike. Lightning bolt gets storm strike back. I'm gonna crash just to give us the AOE cleave. You don't have, you don't want to forget that. Okay, we're waiting for another DRE proc. There we go. Every time I say it, it happens. That's actually hilarious. We got two in a row there. Two in a row. Now it's spending our chain lightning for us, which is amazing. Oh my god, it did it again. It did it again. Okay. It's spending our maelstrom. I don't even have to press chain lightning. It's doing it on its own. Oh my god, we got another one. That is actually very lucky. You're probably not going to get this many, but you know, we can we can dream. There we go. That's the end of that. Okay. I'm going to run away now because that was a ridiculous amount of procs and I realized I didn't even have my uh, I'm sorry I didn't have my webcam up there for that one. I'll get it up now. But you guys can see. Let's look at the damage profile. It was insane. Look at Ascendance. <laughs> we got way too many procs on that. It says it procced twice. It definitely procced like five or six times, I think, right? Might have been six times. So this is the essence of this build. It's a little bit, it's a little bit more dodgy because you are relying heavily on the Ascendance procs to get lots of AoE damage in there. But you can see... The Alpha Wolf, Spirit, the Spirit Wolves, Alpha Wolf did 9% of our damage. Very, very good. DRE, the proc on DRE alone did 9.1% of our damage. Wind Fury attack is way up there. And our Wind Strike is actually really good as well. It's doing about 6% 6, 6 of our damage exactly, which is very good. Just for an extra little bit of damage that you're getting there. So this is the essence of the DRE playstyle with your Wolves. You're cooling your Wolves down all the time. Because we have Alpha Wolf... We're getting physical dogs. Those physical dogs will buff all of our physical damage by 15%. That includes Storm Strike and Wind Strike once we get DRE to proc. When we're in our Wind Strike window, it's casting all of our Chain Lightnings for us, which is why it's such an efficient burst window type of build. And on top of that, you get Doom Winds to give you the extra Wind Fury attack and the extra chances to proc your Storm Strike. So you can reset it and press it again and have a better chance of proccing your DRE. So it's all about that cycle. I really do enjoy this build. It's a lot of fun, and it really slaps when you do get the burst windows. When you don't get them, when DRE doesn't proc, it does feel very, very bad. And it's the only build, not the only build, but it's one of the builds where you kind of have to hope that it that you get those procs. Okay? Okay. Let's move to the second last build. This is the Trinity. Everybody knows what the Trinity is because we've talked about it before. I move this over here. Video review. Somebody remind me to do my webcam when I go back. Okay. Let's talk about this build. Get it in here. Here we go. This one does have Primordial Wave. It also has Ice Strike. And it also has Hailstorm. And it goes down and gets the Elemental Dogs down at the bottom. And it has Elemental Blast. It has everything. This is, of course, the Trinity build. So it has huge Primordial Wave haste windows. Just like the other builds do, but it really helps you to get your execution off when you're doing this. It has the Elemental Spirits damage buff, and this build takes advantage of the Elemental Spirits buff the most out of any build. Because in this build, you're hitting Fire Spells and na Nature Spells and Frost Spells. You're almost never, ever pressing Storm Strike with this build. It's the opposite of the build I just showed you, where you only press Storm Strikes, okay? In this build, you don't ever want to touch Storm Strike if possible. You want to be pressing all these other abilities. Why? Because they are all going to benefit from your Mastery, which increases the damage of your Fire, Nature, and Frost spells. And you're going to be taking advantage of the Elemental Spirits buff, which buffs your Fire, Nature, or Frost spells, depending what wolf you get, by 20%. 
And no matter what wolf comes out of Elemental Spirits, you're going to be getting a buff because you're going to be using that element. So that's what's so cool about this. It also has decent single target damage with the buff from Hailstorm. Hailstorm buffs your Frost Shock by a set amount, and it does cause it to cleave as well. But really, Frost Shock gets that big, big buff. So using that Frost Shock, even in single target, is very, very good. And you combine it with Elemental Blast, which you guessed it, Elemental Blast dips into all the different elements. It counts as a nature, fire, and frost spell. If you didn't know that, elemental blast counts as all three, which means no matter what dogs we have up, we are going to be getting a buff to our elemental blast damage. Now, we're not going to be showing single target damage again, of course. Let me get my webcam up. But <clears throat> I do want to stress that that is really, really important. Your elemental blast damage will go through the roof because you're having these wolves up all the time. And because no matter what wolf is up, it's giving you extra damage. Okay. Let's try it out. We have lost our Wind Fury again. That's okay. We lost Wind Fury weapon. And we lost Wind Fury totem. It's okay. We don't need it. We could actually do double flame tongue once again if we want to do that little shenanigans. I don't know if Blizzard's going to remove that. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Build starts out the exact same way as all of our other builds, except we need to remember to press Frost Shock. So I'm going to reload my UI so that everything lights up for me again. Here we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do this build. Second last build. This is the Trinity build. Wolves into Primordial Wave. We're going to spread it around, yada, yada, yada. Okay, Primordial Wave. Spread it around. Here we go. Big lightning damage. Boom. We're going. I'm using Frost Shock. There's another Spender. Ice Strike to make my Frost Shock do double damage. Now I'm tab targeting through with my Hot Hand buff. I am going to use one LA Blast just for giggles. You got to do stuff for giggles. Get our Wolves back. Okay, our Wolves are up. I'm going to use another Ellie Blast just to see what it does. Not as much damage as Chain Lightning. So we're going to do Chain Lightning from here on out. There we go. Frost Shock. Make sure we're Frost Shocking. Tab target through now with um, Lava Lash. Okay. Ice Strike to make our Frost Shock do double damage. There we go. Big damage from that. Okay. Big Chain Lightning here. Our Primordial Wave window is coming back. Here we go. We're going to Primordial Wave over here. Summon our dogs. Then we're going to go Lightning Bolt into Big Frost Shock. There we go. Big, big Haste Window right now. We have a Hot Hand proc at the same time. There we go. Ice Strike into a Double Damage Frost Shock. Back up to 90k. You can see that Primordial Wave Burst Window is really, really strong. Okay, here we go. Another Frost Shock. Okay. We'll get an Ice Strike in there. Okay. And we'll get another Big Frost Shock. Double Damage. One more round of Dogs. We're still hovering around 90k. Okay. Big one here. Frost Shock. Ice Strike. We'll get our next Frost Shock ready to go. Okay. And there it is. Boom. Okay. So the damage is going to settle down here a little bit. Now you can see the damage profile will be all three elements. Fire damage, Frost Shock damage, Nature damage. That's how the Trinity build works. It's very, very good. I think the damage on the Trinity build is going to be a little bit lower Simply because the ease of execution is actually very high. That's my second ranking factor, ease of execution. It's very, very ha hard to execute this build. I'm not going to lie. It's very hard. Um, however, if you can try to sort of get the, the cadence down pat, it will reward you. And the Frost Shock damage is very incredible, both in, in cleave damage. Uh, up to six target cleave and also on single target damage where you can see elemental blast would do way more damage we wouldn't be casting chain lightning we'd be casting ellie blast so this build is good i think it's harder to execute though than basically all the other builds so we'll talk about that a little bit later let me do the uh fifth and final build here let's look at thorm's wave yeah that's the last one right let's go to thorm's wave where is it is right here okay let me move over here and look at this really quickly okay let's look at this one thorm's wave final build here guys so what's the difference with this tree now well i've gone to the left and to the right on the talent tree i have not gone down the middle and almost every other build i have gone down the middle and picked up something in terms of the doggos but now we're stopping at one point into which dr wolf bones we go the primary wave route and we go the thorm's uh, invocation route this has an absolutely incredible Primordial Wave burst window, similar to other builds. You have Doom Winds, you have Primordial Waves, but now you have Thorums, or DRE as well. And if you get a DRE proc, 
in your primordial way of doom winds window it's absolutely disgusting the ease of execution is very similar to the other storm strike builds you just press storm strike or wind strike when it comes up and i think that this build potentially it might have the highest damage potential of all five of the builds that i've shown you today okay so ease of execution is really easy resource generation is very easy and it's very very fun to pull off so let's look at it in game now this is the Thorum's Wave, because we have Primordial Wave and Thorum's Invocation. That's why it's called Thorum's Wave. That's what we're naming it today. Okay, move this back. I've got my talent set up here once again. This is how it's going to look. We are back on the Wind Fury train. So we have Wind Fury Weapon and Flame Tongue Weapon again. Let's get those both going. Let's put Wind Fury Totem down. Okay, there we go. Same rotation. We're starting off with Dogs into Wave. Into a big burst window with Doom Winds, we are trying to get a proc on Thorum's Invocation. So let's make sure we're Storm Striking as much as we can. Dogs, Crash Lightning, Primordial Wave. I'm going to Storm Strike now. Oh my god, I got it right away. We're Storm Striking. We're doing this. Okay, boom. Maybe we'll get another proc. Doom Winds. 109k. Wolves are back. Okay. We'll uh, do one more rotation here. And then um, uh, once we get back to Primordial Wave, we'll basically call it quits in a second here. Okay. Waiting for a DRE proc. This is where this build can have a little bit of a drought. And if you don't get any DRE procs, it feels pretty bad. But as soon as you do, it feels absolutely incredible. Let's get our wolves up here. Okay. Primordial Wave, that fifth target. Lightning bolt and go. Trying to get a DRE proc. Haven't got one yet. We still cool down the wolves. But we don't cool down the wolves as much as we used to. So we're getting unlucky here. Not getting any DRE procs. That is the danger of doing a deeply rooted elements build. Is that you just might not get any procs. And that can be very, very sad. There you go. That is the build here. This is going to be doing less damage. I said it had the potential to do the highest amount of damage, but when you don't get a single DRE proc, except at the very beginning, then this is kind of what it ends up looking like. So I'm actually glad that it's doing this because um, this is a pretty realistic showing of what might end up happening if this, if this happens to you. Okay? Just keep that in mind, guys. There, we got one at the end there. See, the damage goes way up when we do get that. But that's what can potentially happen with DRE builds. Every single time you run them, your DRE builds can uh, sort of betray you a little bit and not give you a ton of damage. So that build feels really good to play because you get the Primordial Wave window, which I really like. However, it can be incredibly inconsistent. And you don't have any Storm Strike buffs like Legacy or Elemental Assault trying to help you out when you are in the Drought phase. Whereas the other Deep Rooted Elements build that I did definitely has a better profile for that so let's go to the final screen here let me jump out of this and we'll go back to the video review we can look at everything and i'm gonna just gonna exit here okay let's look at this and we'll get the webcam back up so we looked at five different builds okay thorum's wave alpha this one's on thorum's wave right now it needs to be on something else not the Raging Fire. This one. Alpha Wolf. Oh, no. This one. There we go. Raging Fire, Alpha Wolf, Primordial uh, Winds, Thorum's Wave, and then the Trinity, which I did have up somewhere. Uh, Primordial Winds number two. We can turn that into the Trinity over here. Okay, so these are our five builds, guys. Now, we are going to rank these. Let me pull these over here. I do think that um, they're all actually very close. Let me just say that right off the bat. I think these are all incredibly close. And realistically speaking, um, they're all going to be in a similar spot. I do think some of them rise above the others because they've got the ability to be a little bit more flexible. Maybe something like the Raging Fire build, having more flexibility in the single target versus um, AoE kind of match there. But let me look at this really quick. There we go. I got them all over here now. I had to pull them to my other screen. Okay. We're going to rank them right now. 
there I will tell you right now there's going to be multiple builds that actually share this sort of S tier but we're going to start it with the Doom Winds plus, plus Primordial Wave which is the Primordial Winds build so that is this one right here it's got Primordial Wave into the Alpha Wolf's um, playstyle you're not relying on any procs from DRE I'm going to put the Primordial Winds as the as an S tier one I think it's very 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 good number one really what's most important is that you have Primordial Wave it's actually such a huge deal um, for all these builds. If you take Primordial Wave, it just gives you that huge burst window. The, the, the haste that you get from that is absolutely outrageous. It does generate consistent resources, and it is a very smooth and easy rotation to play, and it does big, big damage. So Primordial Winds is going to be going in the S tier slot right there. Now let's look at the Fire build. That one is the Raging Fire. Okay, I'm going to be putting that one... Um, just one i actually think it it could compete for really really good damage in dragonflight and i actually think it is as good as the other builds and i think it also has the flexibility of being able to do single target damage potentially better than some of these other builds so as i said before it's got strong single target damage with hot hands and with elemental blast i think it has the highest potential to do strong single target damage which is why i really really like it and i'm going to put it right there the Trinity build, let's look at that one next. The Trinity build, I think, has some of the biggest problems. And the reason is the ease of execution is really, really difficult on this build. Having to do Frost Shock and stuff um, is just very, very hard. And um, it's just, if you have low levels of haste at the beginning of an expansion, it's also very difficult. Yes, your burst windows in Primordia Wave are great. But I do think that right now I'm going to put the Trinity build potentially down to a B, actually. It might be the lowest scoring build that we have here. Just because the ease of execution is so difficult. There's so many extra buttons that you have to press. And it's just not fun to have to press so many extra buttons like that. I know a lot of people don't like this that build for a reason. I love the Trinity build. And it does utilize your mastery. It utilizes the elemental spirits the best. But because you have so many extra buttons to press and there's so many procs going on, I just don't think it really gets it gets there. So maybe later on in the expansion it will. But for now, I'm going to put it down at B. Okay. Put that one there. Now, let's look at the last two builds that we've got going here. Where is my Alpha Wolf build? Here it is. Let's bring it over here. Alpha Wolf is good except that you are really really reliant on the dre proc going off correctly and if it doesn't go off you're in a lot of trouble i'm gonna put it at a because i think the damage profile here is actually incredibly strong oh it just went back it just went sideways to one there we go the damage profile on this is actually very very strong but if this um, DRE proc does not go off, your damage will slowly start to creep down. As you saw in the gameplay demonstration there, the damage will just slowly fall and fall and fall. And that is a very frustrating, um, very frustrating thing to have happen. So I'm putting Alpha Wolf as an A. It, it, if you do get the procs, it like goes to an S. If you don't get the procs, it could come down to a B. If you don't get any procs at all, it could come down to a B. So on average, you will get enough procs to make it an A build. That's what I'm going to say right there. The last one that we're going to talk about, of course, the, the fifth and final build is going to be Thorum's Wave. And that combines Primordial Wave and the Deeply Rooted Elements build, which I said this has the highest damage potential. But as we saw, it has the exact same problem as the Alpha Wolf build in that it didn't get any procs on Ascendance. And you guys saw my damage slowly go down and down and down. So again, I'm going to put that at an A right there. That's where that one's going to go. So that's it, guys. Those are the five different builds. Trinity scored the lowest. Thorum's, uh, Thorum's Wave, which has Primordial Wave, and Thorum's Invocation, that's going to be an A. Alpha Wolf, which has no Primordial Wave, it just has all the Alpha Dog stuff in the middle, and, and uh, Thorum's Invocation, that is also going to be an A. We have the Raging Fire, which is, I think, very, very strong. It has uncapped AoE potential. It has single target damage with hot hands and elemental blast. It's very easy to execute. You basically are just pressing Lava Lash the whole time. I think it's very, very strong. The only thing you have to do is kind of tab target through enemies, which, again, some people don't like to do, and I understand that. But realistically speaking, it's a very, very strong build. 
And finally, we do have the Primordial Winds build here in the S category once again. I think that this deserves to be here. I think this is going to be the most consistent build for you. If you're looking to do a physical plus Primordial Wave build, this is the build for you. If you're looking to do a fire plus Primordial Wave build, then the, the um, Raging Fire build is going to be for you as well. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. I know it was a very long video, but I had a lot of stuff kind of prepped and ready to go, and I really wanted to show it all off to you. So I'm going to be putting all of these pictures in my Discord. The Discord will be linked down below. All of these really cool pictures right here, and I'm going to put the tier set list in there as well so you can see both of them both the tier set list on what I chose and what each build does so if you want to run this build for yourself you can see what they all do and what the talent trees are so let me know what you guys think in the comments down below thank you so much for watching which enhancement shaman build is your favorite let me know thank you so much I love you all I'll see you in the next one